Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm gonna show you five things that you can do with the web version of Google Earth, even if you're not signed into a Google account. This is great for your students who are under 13. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that kids can navigate and locate places in Google Earth itself. So just go over here to the left-hand search function, and they can type in a search for any place they want to go and see. So maybe they want to go to Boston, Massachusetts. And they'll get zoomed in on Boston in general. But if they want to be more specific, perhaps they want to visit a place like Fenway Park. Now it's a little bit more specific and it zooms in on Fenway Park. Now, while we're here, let's make sure that our students can look down at the street level of the places that they find. So to do that, they're gonna to need to grab the little peg icon, the peg man icon over here, drag that over and any place that they see a blue line or a blue circle, they'll have a street level view or a ground level view of that location. So maybe they wanna go here and they'll be right outside the park down at street level. And in this case here, we're actually looking at the back of the green monster. Now we can exit out of that photo sphere. In that case, we were in the photo sphere. Let's get down to street level Go to a solid blue line. And now we're here at street level, looking at the outside of the stadium, outside of the park. And they can now navigate down the street by clicking along and moving in the direction that they want to go in. Now if they want to exit that street level view, just hit the back button. And now they're looking at it from the top. So they can navigate in street view. They can navigate to location, navigate in street view. But maybe you have them find places and you want them to share those locations and share those views with you. So let's go back into street level viewing. Maybe they're down here. And they can share that view with you very simply. All they need to do is copy the link at the top of the page and they can email it to you. They can put it in Google Classroom. You can post it wherever you would normally have them post a link and they can share that exact view with you. You can even put it in something like Wakelet or Padlet and have kids put a collection of things together there. So let's exit out of that and zoom out a little bit. Now, let's look at some of the tools that our kids can use besides just navigating around. They could measure in Google Earth. So let's measure things using the tools that are built into Google Earth. We'll have them look right down on top of the park. And over on the left-hand side, let's measure distance and area. So now they can just click and start to measure. Now you'll notice I'm measuring in meters. Well, if we want to change that out, let's go up here. I'm going to exit out of that. Let's change our settings because currently I'm measuring in meters. I want to change that to measure in feet and miles. And now let's do our measurement. And we've now measured the distance from home plate to the wall. Now that, to be more accurate, I could zoom in a little bit more and do that measurement again. And you'll notice I can measure all the way around the park. 
So I'm measuring all the way around the outfield of the park here. And now we've measured the perimeter and the area. And we can copy that information to our clipboard and put it into a document or put it into an email or anywhere else we might share that kind of information. Now the last thing that we want to look at is how to change and customize our base map. And you can do this right over here on the left hand side under your map style. Now, by default, you'll have the option for clean, exploration, or everything, but you can customize it and say that you want to have borders and labels for neighborhoods. And you can say that you want to have business labels for businesses and sports and parks, and you can turn these on or off when it comes to roads. Put in local roads. We do transit lines. We can turn on transit stations. And we can look at different kinds of landmarks that we want to have displayed on our base map. You can also go down here and turn on your grid lines and turn on animated clouds as well. So those are five things that your students should know how to do in the web version of Google Earth, and they can do these without having a Google account. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.